so great that Michael Bloomberg is going to run for president. I mean, here's just a few of the things that he's going to be bringing to the table. Mike Bloomberg started as a middle-class kid who had to oh. work his way through college he started and as a kid? built a business from a single room to a global entity, creating tens of thousands of good-paying jobs along the way. He could have stopped there. Could have. But could when have, New but... York suffered the terrible tragedy of 9-11, mm -hmm. he took charge, becoming a three-term mayor who brought a city back from the ashes and brought back jobs and hope with it, mm. creating tens of thousands of affordable housing units so oh, families could photos. have a decent place to live, raising teachers' salaries and kids' graduation rates, and creating a more open and livable city for the millions who call it home. He could have stopped there, could have. but when he witnessed the terrible toll of gun violence, mm. he put his money where his heart is, oh, helping to create a movement to take on the NRA and the politicians they, they own, own to protect own families across this country and help turn the tide. And he's funded college educations mm. for wow. thousands of deserving low-income and middle-class kids. Could he stop and supported there? Life -saving I mean, he probably stopped research. so much. And he probably the stopped there. Lobby and the outright <gasps> denial of this administration to yeah. protect the only home we have from the growing menace of climate I'm guessing, change. Did, did he now, stop? He sees a different kind of menace coming from Washington. Uh -oh. So there's no stopping no stop. here. Oh, because there's an America not. waiting to be rebuilt. Sure, where everyone sure. without health insurance mm -hmm. is guaranteed to get it. And everyone who likes theirs can go ahead and keep it. Yeah, we've heard that Where before. the wealthy will pay more in taxes. Oh, good. And the struggling middle class will get their <laughs> fair share. Let's get those oh, rich jobs people. Jobs that just allow you to get by mm -hmm. will become jobs that let you get ahead. Wow. Mike Bloomberg for president, jobs creator, leader, problem solver. Oh. It's going to take all three to build back a country. It sure oh. is. So make America great again is now rebuild America, which is essentially like, the, I mean, it's, it's the same kind of slogan, the same thing. Yeah. Right? Same slogan. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a fascinating, it's a, this is a fascinating experiment. And my, my, there's a million things to talk about on Mike Bloomberg, most of which are just topics on talk radio because he's not going to win the nomination but my favorite part of this is can we finally put to rest the idea that you can buy an election that if you have so much money you can put all your money in there and you can buy an election he's going to attempt mm -hmm. it here the man has 50 billion dollars he is the ninth richest person on earth yeah he is going to dump so much money into this campaign. Well, starting with 30 million right 30 now. Million. And right it, off the top. They say it's the biggest spend in any week in any campaign in American history, including the general election. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. And a meaningless, nowhere week around and Thanksgiving. And there's no way. I mean, what the ego it must take oh. to believe you can win this thing when mm. everyone knows you don't have a shot. Oh. There's no chance he wins. His chances, it's got to be less than 1%. There's no way people are clamoring for a Michael Bloomberg presidency. I don't think most of the Bloomberg family is, uh, I don't think is so. clamoring for that. No, I don't think they are. Uh, and you know, he's going to try essentially a variation of the Giuliani approach, which is skip all the early states. Is he still going to do that? Because I read an article where he was all in now. Oh, he is? That's what I heard. Because he's not even on the ballot in New Hampshire, as far as I know. I, I don't think he is. I know he made the uh, the Alabama ba ballot, and he can get on whatever ballot he wants. Yeah. But the at least the reporting I heard this morning, again, confirmed that he was planning on skipping the first four states. So he would come in on Super Tuesday. Wow. And that's why he's going to be able to spend so much money because Bad strategy though because you'll it'll be over by then it, w it certainly was for giuliani remember when he waited in florida for everybody yeah. to catch up to him yeah and they'd already <laughs> passed him by <laughs> <Yeah>. bye bye <laughs> it did not work it did not work i mean you know rubio sort of did that in the last uh in the last primary as well he tried to compete in certain early states but he is he went all in on florida mm -hmm. and again that that didn't work doesn't seem to be one of those things that that works all that well but think about this, Pat. Here's a guy who is $50 billion uh, of wealth, and he says he might spend up to a billion dollars on this campaign. A billion. Wow. And this is an experiment that's never been tried, really. I mean, Ross yeah. Perot obviously is the most obvious example. He comes in with his own money. He has a lot to spend, but he didn't spend anywhere close. I mean, I think he might have spent 60 or $70 million the entire campaign. And he was running for a general and had to get on, on ballots as an independent. Mm -hmm. Trump ran last time, kind of talked about self-funding, but never, I mean, he spent, 
He probably he spent about $50 million of his own money on the campaign, which is a hell of a lot of money, but it, that's not a self-funding thing. I mean, he was still doing, uh, getting a lot of donations and got tons of help money-wise from the RNC and all these other sources. There was a, one attempt back in, I think it was 1980, where the Libertarian candidate, they put a... Um, they put one of the Koch brothers was the vice presidential candidate. So they could spend whatever they wanted. And it was a Koch brother at the number two slot. And, you know, it helped. I mean, they had, I think their highest vote total of the entire party's history with the exception of, you know, 2016 um, was the, was the one that beat it with Gary Johnson. Um, but still like, it, it's an interesting thought in that all of these problems that you have as a candidate when you go out and you're trying to go raise money and you're trying to, you know, kiss butt to everybody. I mean, they're saying Bloomberg's not even going to be out doing speeches. He's just running ads. He's like running a, a campaign like like a fantasy team. You know, he's just it's, mm. it's he's not going out. He's not training. He's not running sprints. He's not learning plays. He's just the fantasy team GM and he's kind of <laughs> running ads. and You can spend mm-hmm. them and, you know, it's a well done ad. If you if yeah. any of that stuff appeals to you. I don't know that any of it does appeal to uh, the Democratic Party today. Taking a match, the U.S. Constitution doesn't appeal to you? Like, yeah, well, a, I mean, like just burn up the well, U.S. Constitution. Well, that should appeal, though, it to should, the yeah. Democratic Party. Should. Yeah, that should, he should just say he's doing that. Just a quick reminder, too. Michael Bloomberg sucked <laughs> as New York City mayor. <laughs> let's, let's not forget, he banned salt. Or tried, tried to. to. Mm-hmm. He tried to ban salt. Uh, and I think did ban the 16-ounce soda, right? I yeah, you couldn't get 32. a 16 ounce. Was it 32? I thought it was 32. You could Maybe. only go up to 16 ounces, something like that, which made him the en- my number one enemy on earth. Right. Uh, because soda is the most important <laughs> thing in my life. But you could buy five 12 ounce and drink them all. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's stupid. It everyone, was ridiculous. Everyone showed how ridiculous it was and, and yeah. silly it was almost immediately. And the salt thing is funny because we've talked about this before, that the, the latest science on salt uh, shows that it actually isn't harmful. Right. Uh, it, which is hilarious because they've been talking about this for such a long time. And you go back and look at the history of, of the salt thing. It doesn't even, it's not even true. You know what else so, isn't terribly awful for you if you just do it in moderation? Soda. I mean, you could have a soda every once in a while. It's not going to be a big deal. Oh, yeah. Right? And, uh, I mean, or you could do what I do and have 12 a day. Right. And that that is okay, too. <laughs> you know, uh, If that's what you want to do. that's what you want to do. He's and, not a freedom guy, though. Michael Bloomberg no. is not a do-what-you-want-to-do kind of guy. Yeah, there's a certain brand of politician, and, and they come from <laughs> both sides, right? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. go back to Al Gore on lyrics in rap songs. You remember back in the day, right. Alan Tipper, right? That sort of- Came this, with the warning labels. Yeah. It, was, it was Tipper Gore that was behind all that. Yeah. There's sort of parental uh, uh, thing that they that some certain politicians do. And one who does mm-hmm. it on, uh, you know, quote unquote, the right, however you see him, is Mike Huckabee. He's the same way. Where like he wants to make sure, look, yes, I'm I'm on board with Michelle Obama's, you know, don't put too much, you know, crappy food in kids' lunches uh, plan, and and let me let's make these this illegal because I think it's bad, and this should be illegal because I think it's bad. It, it, this it's this parental uh, or almost a maternal mm-hmm. right. um, uh, uh, thought of the it way you're supposed because to because they know better because they know better, and mm-hmm. that's Bloomberg 100. percent Yes, he's totally down that road. And there's some things about that that appeal, I think, to Democrats, right? Where mm-hmm. you said, you know, p- lighting the Constitution on fire, there's an argument to make that he should just make that his campaign slogan. Right. I'm Michael Bloomberg. I will light the Constitution on fire. And it might actually work in the Democratic primary right now. Seems to be what they want uh, when you look at the, yeah, with, with who they're choosing. But Bloomberg is at least seen as a centrist, used to be a Republican. Then he was an of. independent. Then he was an independent. And then he's just full-fledged Democrat. Yes, and so I don't think there's much hunger for him. Bloomberg's a guy who has all sorts of weird Me Too problems, which has not been investigated, but will I'm not be. Sure, I know about the Me Too problems of Bloomberg. Yeah, I, he, I haven't heard about that. He's apologized for some of it. Um, I wouldn't say it's not Harvey Weinstein stuff we're talking about. It's it's stuff where he was very dismissive of women at okay. the workplace. Um, he is known as a guy. Uh, there's there's a profile that was written a few years ago about Bloomberg, and he's talking to a reporter. And uh, if you have a child in your car, it might be a good time to turn the radio down for a second. He's talking to a reporter, and they're at like a party with all these you know beautiful people in their beautiful gowns walking around. And he's 
this person is trying to, you know, you know what these profiles are like, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like you, they're super in depth. They analyze everything you do. You know what I mean? That all the color Mm -hmm. of every moment is there. You're like a fly on the wall in the room with whoever's being profiled. So at one point, a beautiful woman walks by, I believe in her twenties and, uh, and Bloomberg blurts out to, to the reporter standing right there, man, she's got a, she got a hell of an ass on her, huh? Oh, golly. And it com- comes, it's in the profile, <laughs> yeah. right? Like you can't, that's not a thing that, I mean, you have And to, this happened when? I, think we, was, I want know? to say it was 2013. It's not, uh, it's not a long time ago. Fairly recently. Yeah, it's not like we're going back to the 80s for this yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there is a, uh, uh, there's no fit. There's no sensible, logical fit for Mike Bloomberg to win this nomination. It is purely- mm-hmm an ego thing. It's purely, he thinks he's the only person who can do this, right? It's a big deal. And Mm -hmm. what I find interesting about this, maybe the biggest part of this, is there has been this thing in politics where we've been told over and over and over and over again, we have to do something about money in politics because you can just buy elections. And we've said how many times, it's just not true. Where is the evidence of this? Right. It has nothing to do with who spends more money. Donald Trump spent nothing compared to Hillary Clinton and won that election. Mm Mm-hmm. It is not, a, it's not about that. Michael Bloomberg is going to come in here and have a war chest of $50 billion, the, the ninth largest war chest of any person on earth to come in here and try to win an election against people like Andrew Yang and uh, Cory Booker. <laughs> and if you can't do that, if you can't beat the mayor of South Bend, Indiana with $50 billion. I don't think he's going to. I don't think he is either. And not only is he not going to win the election, he's not going to beat maybe even Andrew Yang. I, I I don't see him getting past, isn't Yang up to like 4%? I don't see Bloomberg, Bloomberg much higher than 4%. Yeah, I mean, Yang's actually done really well with this election. He, he has. And he's a, I think he's a, he stands out of this field as someone who is at least honest and... Mm-hmm well-reasoned, though I disagree with his reasoning on almost all the things he's talking about. He at least knows what he's talking about. Unlike someone like Elizabeth Warren, who's just saying whatever thing she can say to try to vilify people who are wealthy. She's just start graving nuts. Yeah, she's just nuts. And it's it gets worse and worse every day. She, uh, she, she is, she, you know, and you know what's going to be really fun to watch is if what looks like ha- is happening in the polls with her falling continues to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh man, her in ultimate flail mode is going to be fantastic. <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be. It might be better be than Beto. It might be better than Beto. <laughs> 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 